Okay, Pashashim, look it up. My name is Sam Vaknin, I'm the author of Malignant Self-Love, Narcissism Revisited, and a former visiting professor of psychology. So today we are going to discuss how to separate and individuate after, in the wake of a relationship with a borderline. It's like asking how to reconstruct your life after a tsunami or a tornado. Yes, it's dead bad, ladies and gentlemen. It is dead bad and often even much worse. <laughs> so let us discuss reconstruction. You remember that when you break up with a narcissist, or more precisely when the narcissist devalues and discards you, I recommend a three-phased process. Identify the narcissist's voice and silence it. Separate and then individuate. Each of these three phases has a video dedicated to it. And if you go down to the description, <laughs> always go down with me, you can never go up. If you go down to the description, you can find links to videos which are relevant to a breakup with a narcissist. Don't forget, my whole work is based on the twin concepts of shared fantasy and dual mothership. The narcissist um, acts as your mother, idealizes you and offers you unconditional love. You act as the narcissist's mother, you idealize him and offer him unconditional love. And when, then when you break up, there is triple, triple mourning. You mourn your own idealized self. You mourn the child that you had just abandoned, your narcissist. And you mourn the, you mourn the mother that you have lost in the shape of the narcissist. None of these dynamics, none of them, applies to your relationship with a borderline. In borderline personality disorder, the shared fantasy does not consist of a reenactment of early childhood. The shared fantasy in borderline is about external regulation. The borderline literally hands over, outsources her mind to you as the intimate partner and expects you to regulate her emotions, stabilize her moods, and generally render her more peaceful and more functional. You become an external regulator. Now, of course, consequently, the borderline approaches you and then when you get too close for comfort and when you control too many of her internal functions, she avoids you. Approach, avoidance, repetition, compulsion, the inevitable or ineluctable, <laughs> look it up, I love these $20 words, the ineluctable outcome of the clash between abandonment, anxiety, separation, insecurity, and engulfment or enmeshment, anxiety. Now, all this is all, everything I've just said is old news. What's, what do you have to tell us, Vakni? <laughs> can you just get to the point, finally? Yes, I can, which in itself is shocking, breaking news. I never get to the point. Okay, but this time I will because I really, really have mercy on you. Separating and individuating from the borderline is a mirror image of separating and individuating with the narcissist in the wake of narcissistic abuse. There is also borderline abuse. It's distinct from narcissistic abuse. It's much more aggressive. It's much more unpredictable. It involves switching between self-states and a hefty dose of secondary psychopathy. So when you separate from the borderline, the experience is utterly different to separating for, from a narcissistically abusive narcissist. Remember the following. Even though the borderline tends to idealize you, she regards you as her best friend or special friend, as a rock, around which she constructs her life and around which her world, her reality, her universe revolves, 
you're the pivot, the axis, you are her life and her and her world. So despite all these, the borderline also regards you as an abuser. She casts you as an abuser. Now this is known as ambivalence, hate, love, harboring two conflicting or mutually contradictory, mutually exclusive emotions at the same time. On the one hand, the borderline regards you as a godlike figure, someone who is the custodian of her inner states, of her inner peace, of her ability to function, of her ongoing life, of her someone who is who guarantees a counterweight to her lability and her dysregulation, someone whose presence sort of creates an ambience or an environment within which the borderline feels safe and stable and almost, one could say, normal. But her engulfment anxiety and the resentment that she feels about her dependency on you force her to consider you a malevolent force, a persecutory object, an enemy, a hostile abuser, someone who is out to get her. The borderline is highly paranoid, exactly like some types of narcissists. And so you are there, not by accident. There is some stratagem, there's some conspiracy, there's something unseemly and untoward going on. And so this duality, you're my life, you're my enemy. I hate you, don't leave me. I love you, I'm going to get away from you. I'm going to push you away. This duality is the core and the quiddity and the essence of our relationship with the borderline. And what drives the borderline's intimate partner uh, the, the borderline's intimate partners to distraction. What what it's crazy making. <laughs> you can't make sense of any of it. And so the borderline regards you as an abuser, and you need to take this into account when you separate from her. Because if you separate from her abruptly and cruelly, if you're heartless, if you are sudden if she perceives what you're doing as intentional rejection and humiliation and abandonment, if she firmly believes or develops a conviction that you are out to destroy her, to negate her, to cause her to disintegrate and fall apart. In other words, if she projects her own hatred and attributes hatred to you, she says, "You, he hates me. That moment, the borderline becomes your lifelong enemy. She bears a grudge, which is essentially never ending. And so to avoid this unfortunate outcome, you need to micromanage the separation process very delicately and very, very attentively. You need to be sensitive. You need to think before you act. You need to have a lot of perspicacity. You need to be attuned to the borderline's subtle cues. Separation, um, abandonment, rejection are the most traumatic things, most, most traumatic experiences as far as the borderline is concerned. And your aim is not to traumatize you, to traumatize her. Your aim is to set yourself free. So the first thing you should do is to admit your contributions as an intimate partner uh, to the situation. You must accept your role, your responsibility in the relationship, the demise of the relationship, the unfolding of the relationship, the dynamics of the relationship. You must accept that your mate selection process is probably flawed. You must recognize your own savior, rescuer complex, you must understand that you inadvertently acted in ways that facilitated a drama triangle, 
to use Kaufman's uh, term. You, the borderline provokes in her intimate partner reflexes of protectiveness and provision. She appeals to their vanity, grandiosity, macho instincts if they are men. She casts herself as the helpless damsel in distress. And so you need to recognize your own pathologies, your own dysfunctions, and your own self-destructive and self-defeating proclivities. Therefore, your own involvement in the condition of the relationship and its dysfunctional dynamics. Owning up to your contributions, accepting responsibility for your role, these are critical steps towards healing and relatively benign, non-acrimonious separation. You then need to extirpate. You need to cleanse yourself. As the borderline infects you with her view of you as an abuser. She's very convincing. She is the epitome and the quint quintessence of learned helplessness. She's always uh, at the mercy of someone like Blanche in <laughs> Streetcar Named Desire. So it's very easy for her to convince you and others that you are a predator, you are an abuser, you are a bad person, you are an unworthy bad object. In this sense, she fulfills or reenacts maternal voices that told you the same. So you need to tell yourself repeatedly, I am not an abuser. These voices that keep telling me that I am, these are not my voices. This is not my authentic voice. You need to get rid of guilt and shame instilled in you by the borderline. The borderline blackmail you, blackmails you emotionally. The borderline extorts you by pretending to be suicidal, for example, or by claiming that you had pushed her to certain adverse outcomes. So she abrogates her agency. She acts as if she's non-agentic. She says, I came to rely on you and look what you have done to me. I gave you access to me and you have abused it and misused it. I loved you and you have leveraged my love and taken advantage of it and of me. She creates a dramatic theater play in which you are the villain. You are the villain and she is the unadulterated, unmitigated victim. Don't adhere to her script. Don't collaborate with this screenplay. Don't participate in her movie. While you do accept your responsibility for the relationship, co-responsibility for the relationship and your contributions to it, you did not abuse the borderline, in all likelihood, by the way. It's actually quite the opposite. In the vast majority of cases, it is the borderline who is abusive. Get back your authentic voice. Get rid of your guilt and shame. Realize that you had been manipulated into villainizing yourself. Reclaim and regain your sense of yourself as a relatively good person, someone who is not out to victimize people, who is not out to damage and harm and hurt them, someone who is more a victim of circumstances of the borderline and a victim of his own tendencies to rescue and save and heal and fix than anything else. I am not an abuser. Keep telling yourself that time and again. Remember that the borderline parentifies you. She forces you to become a parent, a mother or a father if she has daddy issues. Get rid 
of these parental functions in the shared fantasy, refuse to continue to be her mother, refuse to continue to be his father, refuse to continue to collaborate in this charade of we are one big happy family, it's we, it's us against the world, a cult-like a cult -like setting where there is an alliance between you and the borderline against the entire universe which conspires to destroy your unity and your love. This is a counterfactual, nonsensical narrative. Don't adhere to it anymore. Reverse the parentifying process. Insist on equality with the borderline. I'm not your father. I'm not your mother. We are two adults. And as adults, we need to act maturely. And we need to love each other. And we need to help each other. And we need to support each other up to the point that our boundaries are breached up to the point of self-sacrifice because these are not healthy things and we need not idealize each other and we need not lie to each other or love bomb, bomb each other or groom each other so you need to refuse to collaborate to continue to collaborate in the borderlines fan fantastic narrative her shared fantasy the narcissist has his own shared fantasy which is essentially you're my mother the borderline has a similar shared fantasy but her shared fantasy assigns to you a role of an external regulator of her internal environment because you have parental powers get rid of the pg-13 classification and by doing all these things you will be handing over ownership and regulation, handing them back to the borderline. It's like saying, I refuse to participate in this any longer. The role you're assigning me is not true, is not me. You're not allowing me to be who I am. You're coercing me, coercing me into a role which negates my essence, my beliefs, my values, my behaviors, and my traits. I will no longer, no longer act in a way that will make me disappear just to gratify your need to be regulated from the outside. You, you, borderline, need to own, to own your moods, to own your emotions, to own your fears, to own your anxieties own your insecurities i will help you to do that because i love you and i'm your partner but i will not do it for you i will no longer do it for you and if she refuses move on to separation when we separate from the narcissist the first phase is to silence the narcissist's voice in your mind it's not different in the case of the borderline when you separate from the borderline silence her voice in your mind this voice is not your friend it's an enemy voice there's enmity and hostility in this voice it's a voice that keeps telling you you're bad you're unworthy you failed you're a traitor you abandoned me you rejected me you abused me you did unspeakable things to me you a, ho a horrible person forget all this these are all manipulative signals and messages and, and eliminate the borderline's voice in your mind and by doing so and by refusing to collaborate with her in this Commedia dell'arte production you will actually be helping her because by taking away your voice by taking away her voice in other words by eliminating the interjects she will be left only with her authentic voice you are leaving her no choice but to confront herself to look herself in the mirror and to realize her authenticity separating from the borderline 
in this mature and healthy way is very helpful to her. Now, of course, she will protest this. She will tell you that she she's suicidal, that you are driving her to suicide, possibly intentionally, that you are a horrible person, that from the very get-go, your intention was to ruin her and destroy her because you're a predator or a psychopath or God knows what. Don't listen to any of this. It's nonsense. It's counterfactual and it's intended to manipulate you to the point of reassuming the role of an external parental regulator. Never do this again. Never do this again. Silence her voice in your mind. Withdraw your voice from her mind. Refuse to collaborate anymore. Help her to discover her authentic self. Faced with no outside facilitation, she will have no choice. Uh, it undermine her fantasy. The core of it is undermine her fantasy. And so now you are ready to move on to the individuation phase. Once your voice has been silenced, once you are no longer an external regulator, or in her mind, an abuser, you are not a savior, you are not a mother or a father, and she's not a child. Once all these functions are gone, the way of the dodo, the fantasy crumbles, what's left? Yes, reality. You're both now confronted with reality. The borderline's voice is now, I mean, the borderline, the, the only voice in the borderline's mind is now her authentic voice. And she needs to go through the classic phases of individuation. Go to the description and watch the video on how to individuate. It involves embodying uh, mind body work, owning your voice also by connecting it to your body. It involves reconstituting three lost functions self mothering or self love the borderline needs to learn to love herself self serving and self saving agency borderline needs to develop a sense of agency independence autonomy and self efficacy and finally choosing an affirming life negating depression anxiety catastrophizing automatic negative thoughts, fighting, fighting off suicidal ideation. It's all described at length in the video about how to individuate. So go down to the description and watch the videos listed there. Let's summarize. Separating individuating from the narcissist is not the same as separating individuating from the borderline. In both cases, you need to silence the voice of your narcissistic or borderline intimate partner. In both cases, you need to reclaim your authentic voice. But there are complications in the case of the borderline, which I've described in this video. There are special nuances, special variations. Borderline is not like a narcissist. For example, she has emotions. She has a modicum of empathy, warm emotional empathy. She's dysregulated, emotionally dysregulated. She is capable of experiencing positive emotions. The shared fantasy with the borderline feels much more intense and much more real than the shared fantasy with the narcissist. It's also less self-centered than the narcissist's shared fantasy. So you, you are much more involved in the borderline's shared fantasy and you tend to buy into her narratives much more. You need to unwind all this. You need to rewind all this. You need to get rid of all this. You need to force both of you, yourself and your borderline intimate partner, you need to force both of you into authenticity. And then you need to separate by enhancing her authentic voice, by helping her to love herself 
to become agentic and so on. And you need to let go of the function, functions that cater to your own grandiosity as a savior or a rescuer or a helper or a fixer. You need to stop regulating her externally. You need to give up on your own grandiose self-perception, your own narcissism in a way. Reverting to authenticity is a difficult process for both of you. Giving up on the shared fantasy which you have inhabited together and created together is even more difficult. But if you want to help your borderline partner, and above all, if you want to help yourself, there's no other choice. You need to go through these painful steps of separating from the borderline and then reclaiming yourself and becoming you once more. Because you see, you have melded, you have become a hive mind, you've become a single organism, you merged and fused to the point of being indistinguishable. You need to amputate yourself away from the borderline and then set firm boundaries and then cleanse, extirpate the voices inside you which are not yours. First and foremost, your borderline's voice. 